Good morning, beautiful people of the center. And welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Tabernacle Choir. <laughs> As you heard from our host this morning, Luis Salazar, our theme for the month is Changing Direction. We're talking about the power of kindness, and we're using this beautiful book by um, Piero Ferrucci, The Power of Kindness for the Same Name, The Unexpected Benefits of Leading a Compassionate Life. This must be one of my favorite books. I try to read it frequently because of the beautiful way in which he treats this subject. And I always find something in it to inspire me anew about living a life of compassion and kindness. Kindness would be my favorite spiritual practice, the most immediately rewarding, and one that you and I can prove to ourselves through the benefits that we experience from stepping into it immediately. As I was reading through the book again, I noticed for the third, fourth, fifth time that part in the introduction where he talks about the Dalai Lama, who when asked about his religion, and I'm paraphrasing now, he said, my religion is pretty simple. My religion is kindness. First time I heard that, it made a terrific impact on me. It, it really helped me to identify what am I? Because you know when you're doing an intake form, like, I don't know, in a hospital or something, and all those boxes to check, you know, what are you? And, you know, Center for Spiritual Living is never on there, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I know I'm, I'm not Christian in the traditional sense. I'm not Jewish. I'm, I'm not Hindu. I'm, I'm not pagan. I'm, I'm not Muslim. I'm, but any part of any of those religions that has anything to do with kindness, I want something to do with that. I want to be that, however they show the way. And I aspire to be like that. I, I can say kindness is my religion. And if there is something in any world religion that leads in the opposite direction for kindness, I noticed I'm... I'm less inclined to believe it. I don't trust it, and I won't practice it. I think that's why I'm so impressed by the, the words of Jesus when he was speaking to his students, and he said to them, I have a new commandment for you, that you love one another, because this is how people will know that you are students of this amazing message of love that I'm bringing to the world, that you love one another. Because that's how people know us, by how we show up. They'll be able to observe. So I've been thinking about that this month. How will people know you, Edward? And how will they know what you value? How will they know what you believe in? And I think the answer for me this month is they will learn me by my deeds and by my words. So it's been a question for myself, a life-changing question. What will people know me by? And if it is the case, as I say it is, that kindness is my religion, will they know that? Or will I have to explain it to them? I made a decision a long, long time ago to consciously act as if kindness was very important to me. And I learned a lot through that. I learned some valuable lessons as a result. For example, I learned that um, that thing that is most important to you and to me, to a person, that thing that is most important to us is frequently also our weakest point. It is often our Achilles heel. I mean, if there is a place where I'm going to mess up, it's right there where kindness is. And when I do mess up when it comes to kindness, I feel it more deeply because the stakes are higher and it means so much more to me than anything else. When, when I commit an act of unkindness, it, it stays with me for days. It lingers like a bad hangover, which I've only heard about. <laughs> To 
Today's topic is honesty. <laughs> and I'm taking my inspiration from that beautiful book. And in the introduction, His Holiness the Dalai Lama says, kindness is the starting point, the font from which flow so many other positive qualities such as honesty and forgiveness and patience and generosity. It's all connected. In fact, it's vice versa. Wherever you start, the one leads to the other. That's really the heart of the, the teaching at the Center for Spiritual Living, and we express it like this. We say, there is only one life, and that life is God, and that life is perfect, and that life is my life now, and that life is your life, and that life is all life, all life. And to reject any life anywhere is to reject the thing itself. You know, in the language of the 12-step program, they talk about the higher power. It's the same thing. You could think about it this way. Higher power expresses itself, among other things, among other ways, as life, as this life as your life, as my life. Life is, we might say, higher power expressing. So, to disrespect it, to dishonor it, to destroy it, to be inconsiderate to it in any form it shows up, to be insensitive to it, to be intolerant toward it, tells a sad and shocking story about what you think and believe reality is. Now, you know, I, I'm not talking about the minor mistakes that we make in life in being human and, you know, the small jealousies we get over and the accidental on purpose deceits we muddle through and all of the many course corrections we just make being alive. No, I'm talking about how you and I show up generally, consistently, how we engage the way we treat our other beings, the theme with which we engage in life, because it tells people who are observing something about how we believe and what our feeling of connection to others is. They just have to watch. By this, people know. It's evident. I think that respect for life as the higher power, it leads to honesty and forgiveness patience and generosity is all connected deeply to kindness. And, and I believe that if you and I just take the time to contemplate life as an expression of the divine, as an expression of the sacred, it will change us. And, and kindness will become your religion. You just dwell on it. Life as sacred you won't want to cause harm with your words. You'll become increasingly more mindful of even what passes through your thought atmosphere, even of what you eat and how you eat it and how you relate and what you use and everything will be affected if you just make the practice of dwelling on the statement, there is only one life, that life is God. So we're going to be exploring this idea of kindness um, with the four key ideas extracted from the book by Piero Ferrici, honesty, warmth, mindfulness, and empathy. So going directly to the book and his words, to act honestly, even at the risk of saying the unpleasant truth or of saying no and causing distress to others, if done with intelligence and tact, is the kindest thing to do because it respects our own integrity and acknowledges in others the capacity to be competent and mature. So you see, not fake 
kindness making pleasant, deep, mature life. And there's some important words in there. Risk. Ooh. Risk what? Well, you know, if you're a people pleaser like me, then you don't want to risk hurting anybody. You don't want to risk the embarrassment you might feel or that they might feel. You don't want to risk rejection or disapproval. Does anybody else suffer from that? <laughs> and, and the risk of saying the unpleasant, there's the other word, truth. Whose truth? We don't even know what the truth is that we're looking to share with each other. I mean, if, if at best, if we can just get to the facts, stripped from meaning and mischief, that would be something. Right? Whose truth is it that we're sharing? But there's a kindness in sharing the facts, the truth. And the illustration he uses in the book comes from a friend of his who is a music teacher who says, you know, for him it is kinder to tell a music student who is showing no signs of talent to tell them so that they can pick up their time and their money and energy and invest it elsewhere. <coughs> Otherwise, he says, you know, it's like deceiving the student. You might even be using someone for revenue when you know. And, and indeed, it's an opinion, but that's his specialization, teaching music. So he's called upon to express that opinion. You don't know if it's a fact, but to tell it in a kind way, oh, the truth can be an act of kindness if... There's a big if in that. Do you see that? If, just in case. <laughs> if done with intelligence and tact. It's the key to kindness, true kindness, not false kindness, intelligence. And when it comes to honesty, intelligence means to me knowing where I'm coming from, not pretending that I don't know. Intelligence means I'm being honest about my motives. I'm really taking the time to search out my heart to see, do I have the other person's best interest in mind? Or... Am I trying to subtly put them down? Or am I trying to hurt them, manipulate them, get even with them, get my way, influence them, win? Intelligence, when it comes to honesty, means really knowing yourself and your motives and owning it taking responsibility for the emotional wake that you leave when you share your truth. Because, in my opinion, if you are honestly wishing someone well, it changes the way you speak with them. Tact. Oh. Tact means care. It means consideration. It means courtesy. It's a style. And it's an important style because don't you know some people wield the truth like a sword, like an axe. They use honesty to disguise bad behavior, saying, I'm just speaking my truth. And what they mean by that is, brace yourself, I'm about to hit you on the head with my opinion. Perhaps that wasn't kind. <laughs> you see, I think if somebody is genuinely interested in spiritual living, it means that they start a journey of endlessly searching out the way to say what needs to be said in the clearest, kindest way with the most mischief stripped away from it. You know, I, I don't think that even if you get it all cleared up that you have any guarantee how it will be received, right? 
but still I've got to be responsible for my business. I've got to come to the table as clean as possible if I want to be kind. And I, I think I've told you many times that I have communications coaches who help me when I have to answer important, maybe gnarly emails, you know, because I have to send it to them to check for mischief, you know. <laughs> Because you know how you can do that. You know how you can write a beautiful email and it's actually really mean, <laughs> but nobody can fault you. Come on. <laughs> right? So I wrote this amazing email, which is re what really was, was a beautiful assassination, you know. <laughs> hey, you know. And I sent it to my relationship coach and say, strip the mischief away, thinking this is good. <laughs> she sent it back to me and said, only the salutation survived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it respects our own integrity. That's why. We get into it honestly so that we aren't saying yes when we mean no. We aren't saying no when we mean yes. Because you know if you keep that up over time, then by this will all people know. That when you say something, it means something else. That they're never going to know where they are with you. If you keep it up over time, even if you say your motive is to be kind but you're being duplicitous, this is what people learn from you. You cannot be trusted. And the author in the book says, lying has thousands of faces, but the truth only one, which is the good news. Because as we drop pretense, because it takes a lot of effort to sustain pretense, as we drop pretense, there's a relief that goes with it. As we drop the many things that have to be held up in place, everything that's juggling in the air, and then all of a sudden more energy is available for your true expression. And there's a relief in that. Respect for your own integrity is a, a beautiful gift to the world, but to you also, because with more gentle honesty, as you drop the pretense, things get easier. And it also acknowledges in others the capacity to be competent and mature. You see, if I'm going to take to this idea that there is only one life, and it's divine, it's an expression of higher power, and it's the life I'm living, and it's the life that you're living. Now, this calls into play respect. Now I have to deal with you on that basis. I have to trust that that life is in you. At best, I have to ask myself, can I have the trust enough for you, the respect enough for you to come to you as open-heartedly as I can, stripped bare of mischief so that more often than not, when you deal with me, you will glimpse my true religion. Will you see it? In the book, he talks about Buddhism and how loving kindness is a very important practice in loving in Buddhism. And I'm paraphrasing the list of very important benefits that are said to go with practicing loving kindness in Buddhism as a way of encouraging you to come back and explore deeply with me what is waiting for you. If you practice loving kindness, you will sleep more easily. If you practice loving kindness, you will awaken more easily. If you practice loving kindness, people will love you more easily. If you practice loving kindness, animals will love you more easily. If you practice loving kindness, life will love you 
more easily. If you practice loving kindness, external dangers will have less hold on you. If you practice loving kindness, your face will become more radiant. If you practice loving kindness, you will become more serene. If you practice loving kindness, when those major changes come in life, you will remain unconfused by them. Now next week, we're going to be talking about the temperature of kindness, which the author identifies as warmth. How about that? So I invite you to breathe in with me. As you exhale, let your eyes close. And as you do that, I invite you to bring into your awareness the image of or the thought of someone who loves you very, very much. You might be thinking of someone who is in your life right now, or this person may have passed on. You might be able to clearly see their face in front of you in your mind's eye, or you might just be imagining the, the felt experience of their love. And imagine with me that their love is a, indeed a message from the heart of the universe through them, through their love to you that says, may you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. May you be happy. And letting this imagined scene dissolve in its place, let rise in your awareness the thought of someone that you love very, very much. It could be the same person, or it may be someone else. It might be someone who has passed on, or someone who is alive in your life right now. You might be seeing in your mind's eye an image of their face, or you might be imagining what it feels like when you are with them. Or you might just be thinking the thought of their name and feeling the love that you have for them and imagining with me that your love is a message from the heart of the universe through you, its channel to this person that says, may you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. May you be happy. And letting this imagined scene dissolve, I invite you to replace it with this idea that you're sitting somewhere in front of a mirror, looking into it and seeing yourself. But the reflection that meets you is not like you usually see yourself, but no, it is like the universe sees you, like life sees you. And it is as if life, through this reflection, is generating a message from itself through itself to itself as you that says, may I be filled with loving kindness. May I be well. May I be peaceful and at ease. May I be happy. and letting this imagined scene be replaced by this idea of stepping back in our awareness, in consciousness, in imagination, stepping back and taking in more of the scene as we embrace all of life, not only those who love us, not only those we love, not only the sacred life at the center of our being, but all beings in all time in all spaces, past, present, future, those who have been before us, those who are with us and those 
who are to come, those in this realm and in every other realm. We sense that there is that within us that can take this grand view and love it. And as its channel, a message rises up in us that says, May all be filled with loving kindness. May all be well. May all be peaceful and at ease. May all be happy.